Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about the asteroids. We've talked about the planets, the large moons. Now we talk about the asteroids as part of our solar system. Now there's an interesting point about the asteroids. They are, but they are in the orbit between Mars and Jupiter. Not all of them. They are kind of spread out. The vast majority of, of are indeed in this narrow range right here, but some are in the orbit of Jupiter. Some come across. Mars and some of them even come across the orbit of, of Earth and some do collide with the Earth on occasion. Now where are they located? Well there's an interesting concept here, something called Bode's Law. Now if you take a look at the distance the planets are away from the Sun, for Mars it is equal to 0.4 astronomical units. So if we add plus 0.3 astronomical units we end up in the orbit of Venus at 0.7. If we then add point 0.3 astronomical units to that, we get to the orbit of the Earth at 1.0 astronomical units. Now, if we double this number, we make that 0.6, and we add that to the orbit of the Earth, now we get to the orbit of Mars, which is 1.6. Now, if we double this number and add it to 1.6, so that would be plus 1.2, that would be 2.8, that is where the asteroid belt is. Now, if we continue this process, if we double this number and add it to 2.8, so that would be plus 2.4, add it together, we get 5.2, which puts us at the orbit of Jupiter. If we now take this number and we double it and make it 4.8, and we add that together, we come to the orbit of Saturn. Now, if we double this number right here, that would be 9.6, and we add it together, we get to the orbit of Uranus. Now this is where Bode's Law stops, because if we now double this number and add it to here, we get 40 astronomical units, which is farther away than Neptune and no longer Bode's. So Bode's Rule does not hold out, or Bode's Law doesn't hold out for the last of the eight planets. But it does hold out for all the planets in between, and what's interesting enough, where we would predict another planet to exist, a planet does not exist there, but the asteroid belt exists there. So people always wondered, well, why is the asteroid belt there? It could be for two reasons. One reason would be that there were just not enough small planetesimals to bang together to form another planet there. Or it could be that a planet did exist there, but something very large came along, blasted it to pieces, and too much material was knocked away so that a new planet could not be formed there, and that is simply just the remnant of what was, done, what was once there. The thinking is, for most astronomers, that no, there was, just, there was just not enough material there for a new planet to form. But again, we don't know for sure, and it would be interesting to really get the answer for that. But right there where another planet was supposed to happen, uh, supposed to be, at 2.8 astronomical units, we have an asteroid belt. Now, how many asteroids are there? Well, there's several hundred that are very large. Well, relatively speaking, the very largest of the asteroid is a spherical object called Ceres. It's the largest of them all. And it has a diameter of about 900 kilometers, uh, which would place it about, at about 550 miles or so. Now, how big is that compared to the planets and the moons? Well, it turns out you would need about 50 times the mass of Ceres to get the mass of the moon. So the moon, it has a mass about 50 times the mass of Ceres, and then, if you multiply the mass of the moon by 50, you get the Earth. So you can see that relative to the moon and relative to the Earth, even the very largest of all the asteroids is relatively small. It's kind of a small little dwarf compared to the moon and minuscule compared to the Earth because the mass of the Earth would be more than 2,000 times the mass of Ceres. The others are even smaller than that and so small that when they accreted together in, in those large, they're basically large blocks of matter, um, they, would, they would then be not spherical in shape, but they would be kind of oblong in shape. So they, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but gravitationally, they were not big enough to gravitationally pull themselves into a spherical shape. Only one of them, the very largest, Ceres. Now it turns out, if you were to add up all the mass of all the asteroids, and compare that to the mass of Ceres, Ceres contains almost one-third the mass of all the asteroids combined. So Ceres is about almost one-third the mass, and all the others, many, many thousands, presumably millions of asteroids out there, together form a mass a little bit more than two-thirds the total mass of all the asteroids. Now what's really interesting for us is that the asteroids probably haven't changed in the beginning of the formation of the solar system. 
So if we could study some of the contents and some of the, uh, what the asteroids are made out of, we can really get a feel of what the early solar system was like. It turns out that many asteroids probably are somewhere between 4.54 to 4.56 billion years old, which, would, which puts it right at the very beginning when we believe the solar system formed. And so the asteroids are then simply remnants of that early formation of the solar system. The reason why we know that these are the age of the solar system is once in a while some of these come crashing down into the Earth. And it's actually more often than once in a while. There's actually millions of asteroids out there. And in any given year, it is possible that one or more will actually hit the Earth. Usually they, they get pulverized because of the re-entry into the atmosphere and the tremendous heat that they build up. They break up into pieces and then they land in various places on the Earth. Not that long ago, I believe it was 1969, a fairly large one came in, it was a big fireball that appeared in the sky, and when it exploded over, over the Earth, it landed in the, um, in the state of Chihuahua in Mexico, and then they went scour around in that area looking for remnants of that, of that asteroid, and they did find quite a few pieces, adding up to several tons of the material. They can, of course, then analyze that material, and then they realized when they dated those, those pieces, ended up being about this age range. So again, an indication that they haven't changed for four and a half billion years since they were first formed. So the asteroid belt is a kind of a unique region in our solar system, definitely in a location where a planet probably should have been if everything had worked out just fine, but something happened and the planet didn't form there. Um, it was, they were formed at the very beginning of the solar system and didn't change since then. And so therefore, knowing, studying those in more detail will give us an enormous amount of information what the early solar system should have looked like. And in our next video, we'll tell a little bit more about the asteroids.